Okay, testing, one, two, three. Okay, this sermon's entitled, Intercessory Prayers. Let me open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, then we'll have a little, uh, some silent prayer for a, a few minutes, or a minute or so, whatever. Okay, dear God, thank you for allowing um, me to preach this sermon. I just pray that you'll um, allow me to explain clearly what the Bible teaches on this subject. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let me open up with Psalm 32. Psalm 32. I'd like to go over some verses that, that, that explain some prayers in the Bible. Now, if you look at Psalm 32, there is one, two, three, three entire prayers in the um, in this psalm. Now, I could go over the, the, the you know the Lord's Prayer. You know, um, I could go over a lot of the other prayers of the Bible. But my point is, I'd like to just go over some of these uh, prayers in the Psalms. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now, if you're a believer right now, that applies to you. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Okay, let me just finish out the entire prayer. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. Now, that's, a, that's an entire prayer. Selah was, is like saying amen. <clears throat> now, there is a, a church up the road here, and I've been kind of cracking down on this place. It's called Servant Something, Servant House, Non-Denominational Church. And it's a joke, and it's not a real church. It's not they're not worshiping in spirit and in truth, as the Bible tells us to in John chapter, I believe, 5. Now, they, they have on Monday nights, that would be tomorrow, intercessory prayer night. And now, you think that's what it is. You, say, that's, you think it's a bunch of intercessory prayers, but it's not. Now, there may be a couple people there that are, that are saved and are, are actually praying for people. And that's what an intercessory prayer is. It's, you're praying for the salvation of somebody that's lost. But what goes down at that church is, and we're going to continue reading here in a minute, is that they there's a lot of tongue speaking. You got people walking around in circles. It's like they're it's like they're in some type of shrine or something, worshiping some false idol, and they are worshiping a false idol. And they're they're walking around in circles, you know, supposedly praying. Then they have this this thing where you can kneel down at, and then they put this blanket over you or something. I don't know why. What that I don't know what that's all about, symbolically speaking or in terms of symbolism, I guess that maybe they're trying to keep away the demons. My point is, speaking in tongues, how is, that in, how is that an intercessory prayer? How are you praying for somebody's salvation when, when you're speaking in tongues? Now let's read another prayer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee. Now that's something most Christians won't do, is they won't acknowledge their sin unto God. Now, my Bible says, to first John when, when 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I mean, you don't have to do that to be saved. Salvation is believing on Jesus Christ for eternal life. But you do that, you confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9, to restore your fellowship with God. Now, that's very important that we do this. Just admit, hey, I, I've sinned. You know, whatever the sin may be, just confess it to God and move on. Because everyone sins all the time. That's just reality. David's admitting, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. See that? He's going to confess it. I'm not going to hide it. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. See law. Another prayer. Now, if you keep reading, there's, a, there's another prayer. There's a third prayer. I'm just going over some of the basic prayers in the Bible, then I'm going to talk about intercessory prayers, and then there are some verses that relate to this. Now, a good way to, to pray for the salvation of somebody that's lost would be to go to a, a salvation verse. And we're going to do that here in a minute. Okay, for this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. See law. Now, let's go ahead and turn to uh, the book of John. Now, it's important that we go over the gospel with people. I gave to, got to go to the gospel with this girl. I don't know how old she was. At first, I, I, I heard she was four, 
Then I'm hearing she's six. She's she probably six. And I went over to the gospel with her, and she got it. Now, whether I got her saved or somebody else, either way, I still went over it with her. I used the cube, and she believes it. She's saved, I told her. I said, you're saved forever. Now, that covers a lot. Now, a lot of people, they, I don't know, they don't believe it's forever. I, mean, I, don't, I don't see why a person would worship God if they don't have eternal life. Well, the Bible says if you believe on Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. John 3.15. We're going to turn to John 3.15. This is a good way to pray for somebody. This is, this is a good way to, to you know, you, us praying for that person is not going to save them. They have, to, they have to believe on their own, but you know what? The prayer, you know, the Bible tells us that it's very important to do this. Now, let's just say I'm going to pray for um, somebody that's lost. You know, Joe Lost. I use that name a lot. It's just a hypothetical name I, I threw out of nowhere. Now, I would pray for God to allow Joe Lost to see this verse, this clear verse, that whosoever believeth in him, it's talking about Jesus Christ, should not perish, but have eternal life. And if, if, if you pray that, that the, the, the person will see that verse and believe it. God will find a way to get that person to see the verse. Now, now either way, because God wants people to get to be saved, that's why he's, He sent His only begotten Son into the world, to, to, who is sinlessly perfect, to die on our behalf, to give us a, the free gift of eternal life. And all we have to do is believe on Him. He's, he's made it that simple. Now that's how I know He wants us to, to be to be saved, because He made it that simple, and it's good news. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Through him. So we need to pray for the salvation of people that are lost. And that's an intercessory prayer. Now let me turn to some verses that actually talk about this. It tells us we have the right to do this. And it's our, it's our, it's, we should be doing this, everyone. Now we need to be doing, we need to be out soul winning and praying these prayers. And we need to be preaching. And we need to be listening to, to good, solid, grace sermons. Now there's a preaching out there that's not great. Let me grab this call and then I'm going to continue. This sermon is going to... Hang on one second. Okay, now I'm going to go over some verses in the Bible that are directly related to intercessory prayers. Now, if you turn to um, 1 Peter chapter 2, these verses tell us that we need, to be, we need to be making these type of prayers. First Peter chapter 2. All right, let me see. Let's start with verse 1. I'll just read until I uh, cover all these verses. I think, it's, I think it stops at verse 9. First Peter chapter 2. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If, if so, be ye, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now this is very important because most people don't understand God's grace. They tr here's let me, let me let me tell you what was said. This is ridiculous. This is sad. Um, if a person thinks that, <clears throat> well, I'm not even going to get into that. I'm talking about intercessory prayers. I'll get into that later, another sermon. I, I mean, I just believe. I, 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 actually, I will get into this. I was talking about grace, and I said, um, if a person doesn't believe that a person can be saved at one moment in time and then and then even reject God, become an atheist, overdose on drugs. And then and then and then commit suicide. They're still saved. That that's true. That if a person doesn't believe that, they don't understand grace. And such people need to be prayed for because they don't really get it. My point is that that's just a kind of an extreme scenario, though. Well, I guess a lot of people think that that's too extreme. It would never happen. No, it can, it, it can and does happen. Okay, a person can get saved at one moment in time by believing in Christ, and then and then then reject it, deny it, and they're still saved. Now I'm not recommending we do that because the Bible tells us to strive to, you know, for the higher calling or whatever. But my point is, intercessory prayer, we're going to keep reading until we hit verse 5. It says, verse 4 says, To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Now look at this. Ye, he's, he's talking to Christians, believers. He's saying, ye also, as lively stones. Now, lively means living. and it, that, That's what, it, if you... They put, they put a little T next to that, it, and if you jump down to the reference, it says living, lively. It's pretty much the same thing. Living stones are built up a spiritual house. Now, we all know a physical house is just 
physical, tangible, in substance, you know. But we're built up a spiritual house. <clears throat> now, a spiritual house would be a place, you know, think about you know, your prayer life, you know, your Bible reading time, your praise. It's all spiritual stuff. Okay? You, he, okay, he also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. So he's, he's saying we are priests. And it's our job to, inter to intercede for others, but we do that through prayer. We don't do it through some type of, you know, whatever. You know, we just we don't we, we can't believe for another person, but we can pray for that. We can pray for another person to believe. He's saying that we are an holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That would be a prayer, spiritual sacrifice. It's not a physical. It's not a tangible. It's a spiritual. It's to be a prayer. Let me pray for the, the, the salvation of, uh, you know, maybe who knows anyone, anyone you know who's lost. Yeah, I, could, I could pray for Phil Collins. As far as I'm concerned, Phil Collins is an atheist. He's lost. I mean, it's not as far as I'm concerned. It's according to his own words. I could say, you know, dear God, please direct him to Romans 3.23, that which says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now show him the next verse. It tells you, if, you know, that you can be justified by God's grace. Then show him John 3.16. Then show him another verse that talks about, you know, being saved. And we can offer up, we're supposed to be offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now let's keep reading. Wherefore also is, is it contained in the scripture? Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone. Now where is this contained at? Well, I believe it's in Ephesians where he talks about that. Let's just keep reading. I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay, good verse. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you're not going to be confused. Now, why are there so many people out there that are confused. Why do people add repentance to salvation? Why do people think believing is not enough? Perhaps they're not saved. That's why. And that's why they. That's why they're confused, and then they like to confuse. But if you believe on Jesus Christ, you won't be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. He's calling believers precious. He's not saying that about unbelievers. The Bible calls unbelievers, you know, wicked. You know, you know. I mean, if you turn to Psalm one one, he describes the unbeliever. But he's calling us believers precious. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. See that? They stumble at it. They don't believe the word. They just stumble at it. They don't like it. And I gave a cross out to some people today. You know, one of them was a small girl. I already ta I've been talking about her in this sermon. And another one was to a girl. I don't know how old she was. Now, does it, it, I can give them to anyone. Boys, girls, all. Any of them. I've given them out to boys, men, anyone. But bodybuilders. Going up and giving them tracks. I usually prefer giving them a track. Because it gives has more information. But my point is, I gave another cross to this teenage girl. And she didn't seem to like it. She didn't seem, she looked a little bit offended by it. Like, I don't want, I don't want that. What's that? You know, she needs to believe what it says and get saved. And we need to pray for that for this girl. That's the whole point of an intercessory, intercessory prayer. And a stone of stumbling and, of, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now look at this. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, because God has saved me, I want to get others saved. Now, I'm going to tell you now, a lost person wouldn't care less about getting somebody saved. A lost person would not even want a, somebody to be saved. They, they, they would think, oh, don't, don't, don't get my people converted. I haven't heard this guy say, I don't want my relatives converted. Well, then you're, you're an idiot. And it's obvious that person's lost because they, they, don't, they don't believe the, the message of the Bible. But, it's, but the message of the Bible is, tr is true, 100%. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Now, I can't offer up anything to God other than just prayers. To, for the salvation of others, I wanted every everyone I gave a cross to or, or a track to today. I wanted to, I want that, them to be saved. Now we don't really pick and choose because the Bible says Jesus Christ has tasted death for every man. Hebrews two nine. It's by the grace of God, it says. So we don't really pick and choose who we want to get saved, but you do. We look for opportunities. You know, if you see somebody, you know, who who you, you, has got a shirt that says Richard Dawkins is my hero. Uh, and then you see another person who's just looks like they're a little mixed up, wants to believe, but maybe they just, I don't know. I'm probably going to be more likely 
to give the, the mixed up person a cross than I would the Richard. I can give them both a cross. But you know, if you if you if you, and if you spend a lot of time making these crosses, which I've spent a lot, of, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it. If you spend a lot of time making the cross, you don't want to give it to some degenerate, um, hard, hard-hearted atheist who's just going to throw it in the trash or break it. You know, give it to somebody that at least they'll put it down. At least they'll just throw it. I mean, maybe, maybe they won't break it, but they'll throw it down. And if they throw it down, then somebody else can pick it up. Somebody that that, that just comes, you know, walking by or whatever, and will pick it up. My point is, it's our it's our responsibility to um, to pray for people that they get saved. Now, you notice it says a peculiar people. The world does not understand this. See, the world is all about consuming, eating, taking, stealing, having, being a consumer. That's what the world knows. The Bible says there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Okay, man's whole understanding of, of this life is, is what what can I get? It's not what can I give, it's what can I get. Okay? According to the Bible, as Christians, we're a peculiar people. It's peculiar to go out and just give make something just to give it to some, just to give it just to give it away. Most people would make would make would make things to just so they could have it. Okay? I'm not making these crosses for me to have. Yeah I might I might keep one. I'm but you know what? I'm making the crosses to give out. And when I run out, I make more. And we're going to keep giving out the Word of God, and that's the way that is. And anyone who's a Christian out there needs to be give, giving out the Word of God, period. Okay? But those who don't have it, you know, any, the wherewithal to do so, they can at least make an intercessory prayer for, for, for a lost person. You know, pray for Muslims. Pray for Jews. Pray for Jehovah's Witnesses. Pray for Mormons. Pray for people mixed up Pentecostals, people that are believing a lot of garbage. Start praying for the salvation of people. And, um... That's what God wants us telling us to do in these verses. And if you do so, you're considered peculiar. Think about it. A lost person thinks that praying is crazy. Well, it's not crazy if, if the Bible tells us to do so, and it's not crazy if God answers our prayers, and he does answer prayer. You know, I prayed for people to be able to go over the gospel with. And, hey, it happened today. The girl's name was Jada. I went over the gospel with her. She believes it. She's, she's going to heaven. Hey, that was an answer to prayer. That cube, I mean, you know, this God gave me this cube for a reason. Okay, I gave her a cross too, and, I, and she she had a sister who was not there at the time, and I, I said, "Here's one for your sister." And we're gonna, I'm just gonna keep giving this stuff out, and that's the way it is, and nothing's gonna stop it. Satan is doing everything he can to stop this. He hates people that win souls. Satan hates the person who's gonna go out and make the next batch of crosses. Satan hates us all, but I'm gonna tell you now. When you start doing that, you become a threat to Satan. See, Satan's main goal is to keep people deceived and blind and lost. That's why in the next verses, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which hath not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. What he's saying is when you're lost, you don't have God's mercy. You've got, you got God's wrath abiding on you. But now that you're saved by God's grace through faith alone in Christ alone, you got God's mercy on you. Now you're a child of God, a people of God. Okay? Satan hates the child of God who goes out there spreading out, spreading the good news. You know, I've got Bibles here. I'm going to give, I'm going to give away by request. The person said, I need some Bibles for a prison ministry. They want to give the inmates Bibles so that people can read it and get saved. I'm going to give these Bibles away, but you know what? I'm going to put the plan of salvation in there before I, before I give it away. I'm not giving anyone a Bible unless they know where to go for salvation. For salvation verses, and then I'm going to mark. I'm going to make a list of them. Okay, and that's the way that is. Because I mean, anyone can pick a Bible up and just start start reading it and not make any sense. And the next thing you know, they're going to get mad. Like, what's all this? Ye mountains that ye skip like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. That doesn't make any sense. That's foolish. And then they put it down and never read it again or whatever. When I'm going to put it to cover, how to be saved. I'm going to write it out in all, all of them. And then I'm going to I may highlight some verses. I don't know. But in the meantime, I'm going to pray for, for, the, for whoever gets a hold of these Bibles to, um, to show people the way of salvation so they can have some hope. Okay? I don't care how pe pe peculiar I, you know, being a Christian may seem, or how strange, or how odd. Hey, I'm going to heaven, my friend. i got eternal life abiding in me. You know, We know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. For he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. I know I've passed from death unto life because the Bible says so. And because of that, I mean, what's so? I don't see what's so weird about this. You know, 
People look at the gospel as offensive. It's weird. The Bible is weird. Christian, what's weird about having eternal life? What's weird about being, being on your way to heaven because of what Jesus Christ has done for you? I don't see anything weird about it. I think the people that are lost are weird, and the people that are lost are crazy, and the people that are lost are doomed, and the people that are lost are foolish, the Bible says. But you know what? We, it's still our job to pray that they get saved. Because, they, because, it, because Jesus Christ died for everyone. Now, if a person wants to remain in their lostness, lostness, if they want to remain an unbeliever, I, I don't understand it. I mean, they, they obviously don't understand what the Bible says. Okay, so look at verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, the cross, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. That's as clear as it gets. Jesus Christ did all the work. Now, <clears throat> I don't understand why people want to remain an unbeliever. It doesn't make any sense. It's like you got wrath abiding on you now. The Bible says in John three eighteen, but you know what? When you when you die, when you pass from it, when you when you pass from this body to the to the next, you're just gonna drop into hell. I don't understand that. I don't understand why people would want to do that. But that that's what the Bible says. You can get as mad about that as you want. So people, think, you shouldn't preach so much on hell. No, you need to be preaching more on hell <clears throat> because it's real. And the people that really believe in hell are the ones out passing out crosses and tracts. The ones that are not passing out anything, they don't really believe in hell. They may say they do, but they really don't. They don't really have a grasp of what it, what it's really like, and they obviously don't. They don't really understand heaven either. You know, I guess they think, you know, salvation is just a better this life. That's not the case. Salvation's not a better this life because Satan is on the is on, you know, the Christian who's trying to serve God. Satan's on that person's tail twenty four seven, and it's not fun. And, and God's also chastising that person too. And chastisement is not fun. Being attacked by Satan is not fun. The only thing that's fun is going over the cube with somebody, preaching a sermon, praying for somebody, praying the intercessory prayer, and giving out crosses and tracts and whatever, and praising God. That's that's the only thing that's really fun if you get down to it. Other than you know, that that, that I'm talking in terms of the spirit. Now the flesh sees up sees things otherwise, and that's all I have. Now these are very good examples of intercessory prayers. He's telling us once again. You guys, you guys are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So it's our job to, to offer up prayers to God for the salvation of others. Now, do, does that have to happen before a person gets saved? No. If nobody's praying for a person, they can still get saved, because if all they have to have is the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But you know what? Still, I'm not, I mean, if you should pray for people, any, you know, that God answers prayers. You say, I pray for Joe Lost. I've used Joe Lost as an example. Now, I pray that God will put another person in, in Joe Lost's path. I gave him the gospel already today or whatever. Or I put down a, a sign. I made these gigantic signs. I've been placing them everywhere. Stuck one on the ground at the gas station. People are going to walk by and see that. Somebody's going to see it. I mean, now what they do with it is between them and God. Now let's just say you pray for Joe Lost and intercessory prayer is praying on behalf of that person. I pray that God will put another soul winner in his path, perhaps with a different approach. God will do that. Why would it tell us to pray for something if he's not going to answer? Now, let me, let, me go and let me prove to you that God does answer prayers, and I, I don't really need to prove that. I mean, I've got story after story after story of God answering prayers. I got Addie baptized, Addie, on my birthday two years ago, and I'm going to keep bragging about that because th that's all I wanted that day. When I woke up that day, I said, I'm, I'm bummed out, I'm depressed, I don't wanna be, I don't, I'm tired of life. I said, I want to baptize Addie today. I got down on my knees, and I prayed for, for me to be able to... to Get Addie saved. I didn't even really ask for the baptism. That was a bonus. And sure enough, I got the baptizer on my birthday, and I got her saved and everything. <clears throat> and it, it was an answer to prayers what it was. So don't tell me God does not answer prayers. Only the idiots say that God doesn't answer prayers. Okay? I remember praying for 10 bucks on the ground after day after Christmas. Found it that same day. I prayed for 20 with Ariana. Found it on the ground. I prayed for 50 three times, and every time I found it. Every single time. But why does God answer these prayers and now he doesn't answer most? Because I'm out getting people saved. I got Cheyenne saved. And I got a picture of her in my wallet. I got uh, Sierra saved. And then I got Ariana saved. I got a, all of them. And that's why he answers our, our, the prayers. Now, were other people involved in this? Yes, God uses all sorts of people. He probably planted some seeds with all of them through other people. But my point is, I don't... I don't really know who else would have gone over the gospel with these people that I just named out, that I just threw out. 
because I don't, I mean, I know their situations uh, familiarly, and they don't seem like hardly anyone would even, even crack open their Bible. And they would, probably wouldn't be using the King James Bible, and I don't believe that a person can read the NIV. Well, may, maybe. I'm not going to say whether I, where, where, what my stand is on that or not. But I do know this. The, the King James Bible claims to be uh, incorruptible seed. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. See, that says the very word of God is what gives us eternal life. It's, it's, it's an incorruptible seed. Okay, salvation by any other means would be a corruptible seed. You know, repent of your sins. It's a corruptible seed. Faith plus works, corruptible seed. Nobody can get saved by that. There's no, there's no salvation to that mess. There is salvation only to those that believe. Put faith in Christ. Faith alone, in Christ alone. That's all I have. We need to be praying for people, and we need to just offer up our prayers as a living sacrifice, the Bible says in Romans chapter... Um, one, 12, excuse me, 12 verse 1. Actually, I said I was going to go to a verse that proves that um, God answers our prayers. Let me go ahead and turn there real quick. Mark chapter 11. Now, prayer is very important, and so many people don't do it. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's just sad, and it's, tra it's tragic not to do this. Okay? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire... Now, they have to be wholesome things or God's not going to answer it. If I stop praying for porn, no. Now, I can prove that in James, but I'm not going to do that in this sermon. This sermon's about inter intercessory prayers, and I've given you a lot, a, lot of, a lot of information on just you know, r other types of prayers. Let's just say you're praying for the, a person to be saved. Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, what's, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. It's a good verse. In closing prayer, to God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon on intercessory prayers. I thank you for showing us verses on that in your word that explain that it's our job as believers to pray for the salvation of others. Keep us safe. Keep us real. Bless us abundantly. Keep your hand upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.